After the First World War, the Treaty of Versailles did not only punish Germany economically and socially, but also its historical military pride. One of the most humiliating conditions imposed by the Entente was the disarmament and the prohibition on Germany to maintain an air force. However, Germany's military and political rise would drive the rebuilding of a formidable air force. Among the first aircraft to fly under the Reich flag, the Heinkel HE-51 would be the first fighter to form the new and official Luftwaffe squadrons, laying the foundation for the future aces of Germany. By the early 1930s, Germany had secretly maintained a program of civil aviation schools under the guise of training pilots to fly with several airlines. Also had reached a cooperation agreement with the Soviet Union in military aeronautics, establishing a secret training airfield in the Russian city of Lipetsk. The next step was to deliver appropriate machines to these future pilots. In 1931, the aircraft manufacturing company Heinkel recruited the aeronautical designers Walter and Siegfried Gunter. Their first design was the Heinkel HE-49, officially presented as an advanced trainer, but in practice a fighter model. Three prototypes of the model were built and tested, being the third the most promising. Numerous changes were embodied in a refined fourth prototype, which emerged as the HE-51. The first aircraft, named HE-51A, was presented as a single-seat biplane fighter, with a mixed construction of welded steel tubes and a wooden structure, covered with fabric and removable aluminum plates. This prototype flew for the first time in the summer of 1933 and was followed by nine pre-series A-0 version fighters for service evaluation. To maintain the subterfuge over the restrictions of the Treaty of Versailles, the A0 models were announced as belonging to a publicity unit, the Central Germany Publicity Squadron. The initial production model, the A1 version, began to leave the assembly line in April 1935. In the spring of that year, the new variant, the HE51B1, was launched into production. It differed from the A version in that it had reinforced twin braces and a fuselage rack to mount a 170 liter external fuel tank. This new version was produced in greater numbers. Experience in combat led to the rapid modification of the HE-51 to its latest variant to enter production the C-1 version. Improved as a dedicated ground attack variant, this version had racks mounted under the lower wings panels, which were able to suspend six 10 kg fragmentation bombs. By request of the Kriegsmarine, Heinkel sought the production of a float plane fighter based on the HE-51. It was planned that, if necessary, seaplane tenders could be equipped with such fighters to provide air cover for the Kriegsmarine ships at sea and at outfitted anchoring positions. By that time, only aircraft of the B version were being released, so production float plane fighters came to be designated as HE-51B2. The Heinkel HE-51 in its B1 version had the following technical details, a length of 8.4 meters, a wingspan of 11 meters, and a height of 3.2 meters. Power was provided by a single Barrage Moton Becca BMW 6 12 cylinder inline liquid cool B12 engine that generate a power of up to 750 HP during short term operating. This engine powered a two bladed wooden propeller capable of delivering a credible, if relatively unspectacular, maximum speed of 330 km per hour at sea level and 310 km per hour at an altitude of 4000 meters. 
the aircraft had an operational range of 570 kilometers and had a service ceiling of 7,700 meters. The armament was two ray metal Borsi MG-17 of 7.92 millimeters machine guns with 500 rounds per gun and mounted in the upper forward fuselage ahead of the cockpit. The HA-51 was regarded as the symbol of the rebirth of Germany's air power. In Luftwaffe service, the HE-51 was not just significant as its first major fighter type, but operationally it also breached the gap between the previous biplane fighters and the advanced Messerschmitt Bf 109 that eventually replaced it in the front line service. When the Luftwaffe was finally revealed to the war in 1935, the HE-51 was sent to equip the first fighter formations. In April of that year, it became the nucleus of the Jagdschwader 132 Richthofen, and in January 1936, it would become the ranks of the Jagdschwader 134 Horsebezel. Eventually, several further Jagdschwader flew the HE-51, each of which was assigned a different traditional color that served to mark all aircraft of that unit. In July 1936, Civil war erupted in Spain. Germany, Italy, and the Soviet Union intervened through material and military support in the conflict. At the beginning, six HE-51s were shipped to Spain as an initial fighter aid to General Franco's rebel nationalist force, nominally for use by Spanish pilots. The biplane quickly showed its technical qualities being officially appointed to the battlefront on August 6, 1936. Gradually, a substantial amount of aid flew from Germany, including many HE-51s in several batches. The HE-51 sent had formed two squadrons of the Spanish Grupo II and three squadrons of 12 aircraft each of the fighter group Jagdschwader 88 within the Legion Condor. At the beginning of the expedition, all went well for the Legion fighters when facing outdated Republican planes, with initial victories from August 18, when two Newport NI-52 fighters, a Breguet 19 bomber and a Potef 54 bomber were shot down. Many German pilots who later became well known during World War II, flew the HE-51 in combat over Spain against the Republican Air Force, including Johannes Strauflot and Adolf Galan. However, Soviet aid for the Republican government increasingly included the Polycarpov I-15 biplane fighters, and shortly after, the arrival of the first units of the more powerful I-16 monoplane. Aerial combat against these new types showed the HE-51 to be of class, and losses of both Luftwaffe and nationalist pilots increased. Joaquin Garcia Morato, the best ace of the Spanish nationalist pilots, and who was the first pilot to achieve a victory with an HE-51, reports in his memoirs of his disappointment at the early obsolescence of the HE-51, and how, in his experience, the German biplane was no better than the Newport 52, a French aircraft manufactured more than 10 years earlier. With the arrival of the first units of the Messerschmitt Bf 109, the Legion Command decided to relegate the HE-51 to ground attack duties. It was during this time when World War I ace pilot Wolfram von Richthofen flew the HE-51 in a ground attack role, and through this process he refined his skills as a close support fighter. Later, as a field marshal during the World War II, he passed on these tactics and how to effectively die bomb with aircraft in Luke Buffett ground support operations. 
the Spanish Civil War ended during April 1939, and the HE-51 continued in Spanish service for Franco's victorious nationalist faction, primarily as a trainer. In addition to Spain, Bulgaria received some HE-51 units as a customer. Most official sources agree that 12 B-series aircraft were delivered, seemingly from former Luftwaffe stocks. Delivered and assembled in late 1936, they were given the name Sokol or Falcon. Withdrawn from front-line service in 1940, they continue in use as advanced trainers by the fighter school at Starat Zagora. An interesting event occurred during the Spanish Civil War, in which the HE-51, piloted by Otto Hans Winterer, was damaged by flak over Naval Morales and forced to land behind enemy lines. The aircraft was captured, repaired, and turned over to the Soviets, who sent it to the Soviet Union for evaluations under the code designation I-25. After some tests, the Soviet evaluators conclude that, despite having good defensive qualities, the German biplane lost any advantages in combat against the Soviet I-16 monoplane. Regarding its manufacture, the production numbers of the HE-51 in all its versions continue to be the subject of discussion with total amounts reported by the official sources around 700 units. The report of the main production batches of the aircraft by version correspond to A0 version, 9 aircraft produced by Heinkel Flugzeugwerk A1 version, 150 aircraft produced by Heinkel and Arado Flugzeugwerk B1 version, 150 aircraft produced by Arado 200 aircraft produced by Erla Maschinenberg and 100 aircraft produced by Gerhard Fieslerberg and the C1 version, 100 aircraft produced also by Gerhard Fiesler. A potential development project for the HE-51 was initiated by Heinkel designers in 1936, proposing the extension of the fighter to a high altitude version with greater wingspan and a two-bay wing structure. Another project, tentatively designed as B3, was the development of a front-light float plane. None of these ideas proceeded any further than prototype or development work. Overall, the HE-51 had left front-line Luftwaffe service sometime before the start of World War II, and so did not participate during that conflict for Germany in operational fighter units. However, the type subsequently performed valuable work as a trainer at various flying schools for several years. While it can be considered a fighter of little prominence and early obsolescence, the failure of the HE-51 when it entered in combat was ultimately a good thing for the Luftwaffe seen it forced the service to bring the Messerschmitt BF-109 into operational use far earlier than would otherwise have been the case, subjecting that great design to the pressure of wartime development from the beginning of its career. On the other hand, the HE-51 proved successful as a ground attack aircraft, helping to perfect the proximity support techniques that could provide the necessary support to develop the Blitzkrieg military doctrine. Its strongest legacy in forming the first squadrons of the Luftwaffe might be to consider this aircraft as the first Phoenix that Germany counted on to dominate the skies of Europe.